Good afternoon, it's Darcy Lacouve reporting live from CS 2016 here with Android Authority. And I have a real good time and it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce Giovanni Mancini. He's the head of global marketing with E-Inc. Okay. Sir, how are you today? I'm fine, Darcy, how are you doing? Very well, very well. Yeah. I have to apologize, both of our voices are a little bit blown out. We've been yes. working really hard here at CES. Yes. Having a good CES, sir? So far, great, it's been great. We've got a cool. lot of traffic, a lot of interest, and hopefully that will we'll share some of the interesting products with the audience today. Absolutely. So what are we looking at here today, sir? What is e-ink? So, in a very simple form, e-ink basically encapsulates black and white ink pigments, and we make displays out of it. Okay. So if you look at this display, it's very flexible. Yep. The image stays on it. There's really no power to this display, this display right now. So if you think about it, what we, what we tell our customers is, what is possible in terms of product design if you have a display that uses little to no power, is flexible and lightweight, and can be viewed under all lighting conditions. And from there, we grow into many product categories and many capabilities that we provide to our customers. So my question to you is, how does an e-ink display stay on without using any power? Well, you know, that's some of the magic that uh, behind the e-ink, but when you think about it, the magic is really based on the science. Like I said, we, we basically take black and white ink particles or colored ink particles, we encapsulate them in little microspheres that are about 50 microns in diameter, and, <clears throat> and we laminate that to make a display. From that, <clears throat> when you apply an electric field, those pigments move. When you remove the electric field, those pigments stay where they are. So in this case, we remove the electric field, the pigment stays where it it's last. almost like an I.O., like a switch. Exactly. Very, very cool. Yep. So what are some products that consumers would be familiar with uh, you know, that are on the market that currently use e-ink technology? Probably the products that consumers are most familiar with are e-readers. So if you think about yeah. um, an Amazon Kindle, okay. a, a, a Kobo or an um, e-reader, a Tolino Shine, Pocketbook, those are all e-readers. Yeah. And basically most of the e-readers on the market today use e-ink displays. Fascinating. You know, I, I bought my father a tablet and then he was asking for a Kindle. And he actually prefers the Kindle because it's lighter and it, it's easier on the eyes, frankly. You know? Well, because what an e-ink display does is actually replicate the same thing as paper. It looks like paper, yeah. it actually operates the same as paper. It reflects light that's in the room, same as paper, compared to a tablet type of display or a smartphone type of display, which has a very strong backlight behind the display yeah. that's kind of shining in your eyes. And that's why you feel tired yeah. when you're using a computer yeah. or reading on a tablet versus on an e-ink display. Yeah. So what we like to say is, people that read for long periods of time, long form reading, prefer e-ink displays overwhelmingly to reading on Absolutely. tablets Absolutely. or other devices. Yeah, so we, uh, we had the pleasure and privilege of visiting uh, Wolfman in yes. San Francisco. And in my opinion, uh, it's a game changer for wearables. You know? right. Extremely long battery life, touch screen, flexible, customizable. Right. Can we just talk about the Wolfman for a little bit? So what the Wolfman does is it's a, it's a perfect example of a product that is really enabled by e-ink mm -hmm. and takes full advantage of e-ink's capability. So what you have with the Wolf Band is not only the fact that it's taking advantage of e-ink's low power capabilities because of its battery life, it's also taking advantage of the fact that it can be cut to any size and it's a fully flexible display. Yeah. So you can wrap it around your wrist and it's a large display that you're wrapping around your wrist. You know, some of the displays you can actually twist. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, that's why the Wolf Band is such a great product because it has a large display, very low power, and it can, it can actually be you know, wrapped in um, to how you're dressed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. Um, so what, a, yeah, I just, I can't help but be so excited for it to hit the market, and I think. Right. So are we. <laughs> well, you know, e -Ink, uh, like many other incredible technologies, is kind of an unsung hero, you know, in, right. in that a lot of consumers, they don't really, I mean, we all take all this magic for granted. Right. But let's talk about a couple other product categories, like what we have here, and you showed me this really cool product packaging here, Future right. Med. Uh, that, that that's really incredible. Um, so just take it away, sir. Okay. Um, the fact that it doesn't consume any power, essentially, right. you know, and say, well, like this luggage here. Uh, can you just? Uh, yes. So you know, this is a perfect example of a product that is possible with e-ink and virtually impossible with any other display technology. So um, what this product does is addresses the issue of how long does checking in your luggage take at the airport. Airlines today want to speed up the check-in process, they want to reduce their costs, provide greater value to the customers. And so what Remoa and, uh, has come up with is an integrated display system into the luggage so that when you're checking in at home and you get your boarding pass, you can also check in your luggage at the same time. So to quickly demonstrate what, what, uh, what happened is while you're at home and you're using your favorite app, 
to check into to your airline, you get to the point where you now want to provide the luggage information. So at that point in time, you would open up your, ba your bag. Inside the bag, there's a small button. At that point, the screen goes into pairing mode, listening to uh, what's coming in. At that point, you choose your itinerary. The itinerary is chosen. The bag now identifies itself to the app because you might have multiple bags exactly. that you want to check in. So you choose which bag you're checking into, you're putting the information to, and there you have it within a matter of seconds um, through Bluetooth, the information is now transferred to the display on the bag. So your boarding pass, your information, so, it's all trackable. So what you have here is a fully compli IATA compliant um, luggage tag. It has barcodes for the optical scanners, it has a tracking code, it has the routing information, it can identify whether you have a short connection yeah. so that the, your luggage should take priority, and it also identifies your priority status with the airline. So cool. Also, you, you notice it has some green bars, that means that you're traveling through the EU and the yeah. EU requires that. So what this allows you to do is it solves a number of problems. One is when you're checking in at the airport, you now no longer have to wait in line, you simply yeah. go to the bag drop-off section, show your ID, drop exactly. off your bag and you're done. Just From an airline many. point of view, it also speeds up their information exactly, because yeah. they no longer have long lines oh, there. Oh man, having done almost 248,000 miles last year, a lot of long lines, a lot of boarding passes, yes. you know, I would really be interested in this particular option. But let's talk about the core technology itself. Right. Now, referencing back just to the woe band for a quick minute, I believe it was a uh, 848 by 240 pixel wide display they told me I think it can do around eight frames a second, I believe, of refresh. Right. Uh, but the technology itself, like what kind of limitations or, or possibilities are we looking at uh, for future displays in terms of the gradations of, of black and gray right. or the potential maybe to introduce other colors? Like what are we looking at for the future? So um, <clears throat> E-Ink e has had color yeah. solutions for a number of years. and. So what, what we found is that e-ink shines better when you focus on specific applications, specific. like for example, the luggage here. Right. So in our booth at CES this year, we were sh for, uh, for example, we're showing a 32 inch color display. Wow. So because we focus on digital signage, we can actually use larger pixels okay. and provide more saturated colors. Cool. We also are, do are doing constant ongoing research and developing you know, better color solutions um, so that the color is richer and more vibrant. Um, we also have a product called Prism, which is enabled Prism. by our color changing film. And wow. that is spe specifically for the architecture and design market okay. because, you, you know, we've been working with architects for a few years now. And what architects are looking for is solutions that they can turn their environments into more of a dynamic nature. You know, introduce some changing capability yeah. that, um, you know, that they could use to add for some schematics novelty. schematics and designs and so forth? Uh, not necessarily schematics and designs, but for example, a wall that can change color, or wow. a wall that can change pattern, <laughs> based on the ambient motion of the room. For example, here at CES, we kind of have very stark, you know, bland walls. Wouldn't it be great if the walls can reflect <laughs> the activity that's going on uh, yeah. uh, within CES? So we actually have an example of this uh, with a company called Uberall, is a, um, a concept product called eFlow. Okay. Um, which is a kind of a, an architectural structure which animates and the animation changes wow. based on the ambient motion of the crowd. That's and, so you know, cool. So you know, this was a, a showcase at Neocon in 2015 and it's you know, uh, been installed in a couple of public spaces to, to show that capability. That's so cool. Now, is the ink expensive uh, for manufacturers to use it uh, relative to other display technologies? Um, well, uh, you know, as we say, you know, e-ink um, sometimes does it is, does ch uh, charge a premium price compared okay. to other technologies. You know, um, but that's because of the technology and the value that we provide. I see. We, we believe we provide a unique value Absolutely. to the product design, and you know that's why um, some, sometimes we're more expensive. But in some applications, we can meet the pricing of uh, other solutions that are available in the market. Good to know. I mean, there's. No question in terms of the competitive positioning of the ink, it is right. absolutely unique in its right. offering. Um, so what product uh, are you most excited to uh, sort of have come out in 2016 that will use e ink, you think? Um, well, I can't speak about uh, what's in the pipeline. <laughs> Give us a sneak, sneak tip. Um, but um, 
you know, as I said, you know, we are doing research in a number of different areas yes. with, with our core technology and core, and core egg. We always uh, have been focusing on color, we've been focusing on the flexibility of our film, and we've been focusing on kind of the readability and the contrast um, of our film. So expect to see new product capabilities from e in that area. Okay. But what we're most excited about is the customers today, the new customers that are coming on, like Reboa, that are using our base technology yeah. and finding big new applications for it using the technology we have today. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Well, I am so excited to see what you guys have in store for 2016. We're big fans of E-Ink, and um, I just want to say a huge thank you to you for visiting our booth, Mr. Mancini. Thank you very much, Darcy, for having us. Good talking to you. Giovanni Mancini, Head of Global Marketing from E-Ink, Android Authority reporting live from CS 2016.